In this video, I'm going to do a quick overview of input and output in C++ using CN and Cout. And we'll also use the string class at least to hold strings. So I'm going to declare a count variable as an integer. And I'm going to declare a string. So the string is in the standard namespace. We do standard colon colon string str. And again, we could say using namespace standard at the top to avoid having to do this. But for this example, I'll go ahead and, and do it without that. So I'm going to prompt the user to enter a number. And then I'm going to read that number using CN. And notice the direction of the string injection operator or the stream injection operator has change direction. So now, whereas in C out, it was pointing from the string to C out. For CN, we point to the variable that the value is going to go into, which will be count. And then we'll prompt them to enter a word. And we'll put whatever they reply with into the string that we defined above or declared above. Now, one thing to be careful of is that CN only gets characters until the next white space. So if you put multiple words in here, it's going to ignore them and it's going to leave them on standard input. So once they've done this, in a for loop, we'll run this for loop count times. And we'll print ii plus 1 so that we get the numbers from 1 to count. And then we'll print a colon. And notice how we can inject multiple things here. So it'll print this value. Then it'll print this string. Then it'll print the string variable. And then we'll print an end of line character. And let's do this again. We'll say, well, we'll prompt them to enter a string again. Actually, before we do that, let's um, let's just run this code just to see what happens. So we're going to compile with G++ using the C++ 17 standard. Looks like that compiled good. So let's see, we'll do 10 and we'll say hello. Now let's run this again and we'll say, we'll say 15 and we'll say hello world. And notice it just prints hello. Keep in mind, that means that world is still on standard input. So suppose we want to read an entire line. We're going to use the get line command or the get line function. We're going to read from CN and we're going to put the result into our string. And then we'll do the same loop above. And here we'll print I plus one, a colon, just like we did above the string and an inline. completes our program. So let's compile this and run it. So it looks like I'm missing the stream injection operator there. So this should work. Yeah. And now let's run. So we'll say 10, we'll say hello. And then notice we get a bunch of empty lines here. We're also missing an end of line here. And the reason is, is we still had that new line on standard input. So if we run this again and say, hello world, notice world comes out at that, in that next string. So we could do a get line here after we've completed the first loop. And that'll make sure that everything 
on that line gets cleared out before we prompt for another string. I don't think we should need a, an end of line here. I think that's because it already had something it was reading. So I never actually pressed enter, but I think when I run it this way, the enter will give us the new line that we want. So if I run this, the number is 10. I'll enter hello world. And now notice it prompts me for a string. It basically read the space, the wor world, the exclamation point, and the new line into string. And then we're going to ignore that because now that as I'm prompting, as I'm prompt to enter a string, I can say, this is C++ and notice with get line, it now reads the entire line. To be consistent, let me put a colon there. So that's just a quick example of using CN and C out and get line in C++.